Welcome to episode 21 of your previous. Remember to go check out all the previews of the previous groups on the Euro playlist on the channel. Today's episode is on the nation that were the biggest dark horse at the last tournament, but ultimately were the worst team at that tournament, and that is Turkey. Turkey are a mad country about football, but have they underperformed in recent appearances at the Euros? Can this young generation of ballers reach their potential, or will they ultimately underperform at another tournament? Further ado, let's get into the preview and prediction for Turkey at the Euros. As you can see, history is not kind for Turkey at Euros. Group stage exit 96, quarterfinal exit 2000. That 2008 Turkey team is one of my favorite Euro teams of all time. Nahit with the incredible late goals, Turan who was going to be a young star for them, Fatih Terim who was a great manager, and ultimately they had one of the most epic runs I have ever seen at a major competition. That game against Czech Republic, that game against Croatia, the late winner against Switzerland, one of my favorite teams I've seen. And if only that Turkey team could be replicated because of the character. They might not be the most talented, even though they had some talented players like Duran, Nihat, and these sort of guys, but the character they showed, a never die attitude. And I think that's something that's been missing in the last two teams for Turkey at Euros. They don't have character. They don't have desire. Once it gets tough, they fold. But that 2008 team didn't, and that's why they were fantastic. And ultimately, they lost to Germany in the semifinals in a great game. So what are the expectations for this Euros, right? They're not in the most daunting of groups. They have decent opponents in Georgia, Czech Republic, and obviously Portugal are going to be heavy favorites for that group. So if you're Turkish, you have to think to yourself, we got to now at least qualify to the round of 16. This tournament is basically going to be a home tournament. Let's, let's keep it honest. <laughs> With the amount of Turkish people that live in Germany, this is going to be a home tournament for them. The atmospheres are going to be like in Ankara, Istanbul, Trabzon, you name it. It's going to be electric, the atmosphere. Could you imagine if it was Greece in that group? Oh my God. But that did not happen. Turkey, I feel like they need to get out of this group. Because a lot of people are clowning them. Include myself, right? Even I'm just thinking to myself, can you really trust these guys? Basically, the Turkish national team are like those guys I see on social media. The Turkish uh, ice cream people who, with all those tourists. It's basically a tourist gimmick in my opinion. And they just give the ice cream. No, they don't. That, you can't trust them. And I can't trust this team either. Because I'm going to show you the results right now. It ain't great. So this is recent results. I want you to highlight that 3-2 win over Latvia. Latvia had a red card. Latvia equalized the game in the 94th minute. And it took a 96th minute winner to win the game for Turkey. Alright, 2-0 against Wales. Comfortable performance. Ardu Guler scored an incredible goal during that game. But the one performance where I'm like, okay, wow. You guys can actually defend well. You can defend as a unit. You show a character. Was actually Croatia away. Not the Germany game. Because I don't know what happened to Germany that day. And well, Germany in 2023 as a whole. But that Croatia game away. I'm like, that's, what, that's the Turkey we need to see. They can play good football. But they can defend. That's something that's been very critical of this team for last couple years is the inability to defend as a unit yeah you can sometimes make mistakes and individual mistakes it happens in football it's a mistakes game but when you don't defend as a unit you don't look compact that's why i saw against latvia they don't look compact and latvia are not great latvia are an ice hockey and basketball nation and they were giving a tough game to turkey but then march happens then March happens. They lose 1-0 to Hungary, which is not the worst result. You're going away to the Budapest, hostile environment. Hungary are an amazing team, in my opinion. 6-1 to Austria. 6-1. <laughs> that is inexcusable. That almost gets a sacking for Montella. That should be a sacking. You cannot lose 6-1. If you lose to Austria, who are in form and going to be one of the dark horses for this Euros, I can understand. At least lose 2-1-3-1. One, one. Show some care. 6-1? That's, that's my biggest problem. I have no trust because one day, Turkey can look great. The next day, they can look abysmal. And they can look like at the same level as a Gibraltar or something like that. That's what I don't understand with this team. With the amount of talent they have, they play down to their opponents. They play up to their opponents. But in March, they said, we don't even want to play. What do we get then from this Euros? Are we going to see a Turkey team that are motivated, want to play for the manager, want to play for the nation? Or is it going to be like, yeah, cool, we qualified, we'll just show up. We have a great crowd here that are cheering on for us, but we don't care. We don't have the motivation. It's really going to come down to the players and the manager because the fans will be up for it. 
but it's down to the players on what's their mentality do they have a goal or is their goal just hey we qualify no their goal should be that they have a good performance at this euros and then ultimately finally qualify for another world cup turkey have not qualified for a world cup since 2002 when they finished in third place the most exciting thing about this turkey team is these two guys and i mean the fact they're both 19 years old kenan yildiz ardo guler wow what a future to have these two ballers for like decade 15 years for your national team where you can just build it around these two young stars is exceptional you're blessed as a nation to have this kid on yildiz i really like some some of the games i've watched at him at juventus i'm like speed dribbling is great can finish with both feet this guy, the goal he scored against germany if you have not seen it <laughs> i mean top bins crossbar post incredible goal out of the goal we see what he does he's had limited time with real madrid he's had an injury maybe you thought oh it's going to be another erdegaard case but he has actually performed very well for real madrid in a limited minutes but you see the talent that these two possess it's incredible and they're going to be the future for turkish football for the next decade so i'm really excited to see what is their potential and i want to know what's their role then when they appear for the national team is it that they understand that hey we might be one of the most talented players on this team we got to perform like it or are they thinking to themselves maybe it's not our time maybe we'll take a back seat we don't even know if they're both going to start they could both start and i'm going to show you my lineups that ha happened recently for turkey they could both start maybe we're going to see more of Ardu Guler because Ardu Guler is just the, that guy is like Ozo 2.0 honestly with the way he moves the ball the passing the one touches Kenan Yildiz is more of a powerhouse I would say Ardu Guler is more of the flair but they are both I mean to have them both i'm gonna say it again to have them both is stupid it actually is so stupid i feel like you need to see some resemblance of leadership in a way you understand that hey when the going gets tough we're gonna take over Ardo Guler and kenan yudis and how good are they people let me know in the comments so when you have a deep dive on this turkey national team it's actually a very young team goalkeepers young except for gunik from besiktas who's 35 years old but then to the defense you have Selik, 27 years old demiral 26 kabak 24 it's just there's not enough experience within the team you know a couple of them have had 40 caps 25 caps but some of them have only had eight or five caps within the defense and it kind of showed during at times in the euro qualifiers the inexperience to defend as a unit so i'm looking at demiral i'm looking at kabak and i'm looking at Selik. Those three guys got to show the leadership. If they do start, they have to lead the defensive line. That's the weak point I see with this Turkey team. They can score. They can create. They have a good midfield. But defensively, they have to defend a lot better. When you move to the midfield, obviously you have Hakan Chahonoglu, who's had an incredible season with Inter Milan. And he's kind of played as that six, the DM. And I think that should be his position then for Turkey at this Euros. Because Chahonoglu back in the day was more of a creative midfielder, number 10. Now he's a six. And he's playing the position even better than what he was at a 10. But who do you pair next to him? Do you pair somebody like Kochko, who has had a very difficult season with Benfica, but he's able to drive with the ball, good passing? Or do you play Oshkan, who's had a terrible season with Dortmund? Every time I watch him with Dortmund, he just looks clueless in a way. He just doesn't feel confident. So who would you pair next to Chalhanoglu in that midfield? Because in the 10, I'm playing Ardu Goulet. I'm playing Ardu Goulet. There's no doubt about it. Tosun, you guys remember him from Everton. Yashiki from Mileo, also a very good player. Enes Yunal, who's... Had a little bit of a slow start with Bournemouth, but he's showing the talent. And I think he now got a permanent transfer to Bournemouth. So that's a good move. Kavechi from Fenerbahce. Oktokoglu, one of my favorite players, man. I call this guy the Turkish Mason Mount. All over the field, but gets you crucial goals and scores some nice golosos from Galatasaray, of course. Other than that, you have to look at Guler and Yildiz and uh, Yilmaz from Galatasaray. The, the attack has talent, but who is going to be that main goal scorer? Is it going to be Tosun? Is it going to be Enes Yunal? Who is it going to be? Yashiki, Kavechki. Artogoglu, who's going to step up? Yes, you can ask Kenan Yildiz and Ardu Guler to be the creative guys and get all the goals and the assists. But the experienced players, they really need to take a presence within this team. So this was their last lineup against Austria, which they lost 6-1. They had Kenan Yildiz at striker, Ardu Guler in the 10, Kavechi on the right wing, Artogoglu as the left wing, and then they play Oshkan and Chauhanoglu. Ay, ay, ay. Um, this is going to be a big worry, though. Because, yes, Kenan Yildiz can play a striker. I kind of feel like he's more of a left winger. But I would I would play Artokoglu. You got to start him. 
So then would you look at like Tosun or NSU not playing in that striker role and then Kenan Yildiz could play right wing or he could be a super sub. And do you really trust Oshkan next to Chalhonoglu or do you play Koshko? There's so many different combinations you can have with this team. But the manager Montella has got to get a proper system and proper tactics correct. He's got to use the same thing he used against Croatia. Defend deep, but when we counterattack, we counter with speed. Something that I think they did very well against Germany, where they won the ball in high up the pitch and quick counterattacks. I think that's the way this team is going to play well. You have Chalhonoglu who can find a pass very well. Ardu Goulet who can spring the counterattack. But then if they're going to be a team where they're going to keep possession, keep possession. I mean, if they're going to play a high line, I don't trust this defense. So it's going to come down to Montella. What is the best solution? Because if you see here, this is from the Euro qualifiers, two different setups that they had. In one game, it was just all about the midfield. Look at how they created down the midfield. And then the other game, they created down the whiffs. So I think they're a little bit confused on if we're going to play a possession-based game, do we play it out wide and then tack down the wings? Or do we play it down the middle where we have the Ardo Gulers and the Chahona Gus, Coach Gus, who can create down the middle? I don't know with Montella because you're going to go up against the Czech Republic. Very good defensive team. You're going up against Georgia who are debutants and have nothing to lose. And Portugal where I think they will set up in a counterattack. And if you're honest, the one game I would feel kind of confident in for Turkey is actually Portugal. Because they have nothing to lose. They have no pressure. And they kind of play up to the big opponents. I would be most worried for Turkey against Georgia. Because Georgia will just sit back and hit them on the counterattack. And do you feel confident if you're Turkish of your defense like... I don't know, but I want to know how would you set up this Turkey team? Would you set up with Ardu Goler in the 10? Do you set up with three midfielders? So maybe Kochko can play in the 10 and then you have Chohonoglu and Oshkan as the two sort of eights. And does Ardu Goler and then Kena Yildiz come off the bench? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. It's a very intriguing team with a lot of talent, young team, but they have potential. And finally, the last question then is how far will Turkey go at this Euros? So, well, I'm not going to have so much stock into them. And I think we all learned the hard way at the last Euros. But this is a relatively good group for them. The last Euros, they had Italy, they had Switzerland, and they had Wales. Tough group. Italy are no joke, and obviously they won the Euros. Switzerland, we know, always perform at Euros. And Wales, well, they had Bale and all those guys. You're going up against debutants Georgia. You have to get three points there. Have to. Must. Portugal, if you lose, you lose. And I did see the last group stage game... It's against Czech Republic. So are we going to get a repeat of Euro 2008? If we have a potential goal for this team, it's a round of 16. Just get out of the group. Can he do that at least? Get out of the group. And then anything could happen in the round of 16. And it doesn't matter which opponent you get. At least you progressed well. And finally, you can build upon something with this national team. If they go out of this group again, I mean, the FA really have to look at themselves and say, Hey, Fatih Terim, fourth time? Somebody's got to take over and have a clear structure and bring some character back into this team if this team has character they get out of this group they get out of this group that 2008 team would never bounce out of this group never so i want to hear your thoughts my prediction round of 16 and that's it it's round of 16 could they make it to a quarter final 100 they got the talent and they have that sort of home crowd factor within them but Round of 16. I still think it's a good performance, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. There's the preview and prediction for Turkey at this Euros. A very intriguing team, but one that you can have zero stocks in. Remember to check out the Euro playlist on the channel as we are building up to the Euros. We have all the previews almost done. Then we're going to have the live prediction show next week for all my group stage predictions and who I think will ultimately win the Euros. And if you want to support the channel, there's my Patreon in the description down below. But have a beautiful day. Stay safe in this crazy world. And the next episode is Portugal. Adiós.